Hi, it's Alex. Today I'm wearing a hoodie so that I can give you financial advice. I want to talk about building up a financial cushion by resisting impulse buying. I've noticed that one of the biggest factors that influences whether or not people are able to build up a large amount of savings is whether or not they are able to resist impulse buys. So spending money on things in the moment that aren't really a good long-term financial choice. I've often heard people approach the resisting of impulse buying with a specific piece of advice. People will say, don't carry too much cash on you, or don't carry your credit card or debit card on you, so that you won't be able to make these sorts of purchases when you're out and about. And I understand that this piece of advice may work for some people, but I feel like it's sidestepping the bigger issue of self-control. And I also think it's cutting people off from one of the biggest benefits of having a financial cushion, which is the ability to take financial opportunities that present themselves to you. A really common example of this, say you're out shopping, and there's a certain product that you regularly buy, a non-perishable product, and it's on sale. If you have extra cash in your wallet, or you have your card on you, you can buy a lot of that product, you can stock up, and it might cost a lot up front, but it might save you a tremendous amount of money in the long run. If you don't carry cash or cards on you, you won't be able to take that sort of opportunity. So I think this is one of many reasons that illustrates why it's really beneficial to develop that self-control, to have the buying power on you, but be able to resist the impulse to make choices that aren't good long-term choices. So how do you do this? I think one of the most important things is to change how you think about purchases in the moment, to change the questions that you ask. I've noticed that people who tend to have a problem with impulse buying typically ask questions like, how much is the price of this item? And do I have enough money to buy it right now? Do I have enough cash in my wallet? Do I have enough money in my bank account? And that's usually where their questions end, and then they make the choice. And they tend to not make great choices. People who have better financial management habits, and who tend to resist impulse buys, tend to ask a different sort of question. They tend to ask, does this product offer good value? Does it have a good unit price? So instead of just looking at the list price, they're thinking, well, what is the package size? What is the net weight of this item? How many items are there in it? And they look at the unit price. And they also tend to ask, is this a good long-term financial purchase? Is this a purchase that is going to save me money? Is it substituting for some other product that is more expensive or less expensive? And so on. So they tend to think about it in a little deeper of a way, in a more long-term way. So learning to do that can really help you to resist impulse buying. But I think there are other ingredients to it that are just as important. And I think one of them is to take care of yourself, both physiologically and psychologically. One example of a situation where I've had trouble with making impulse buys is when I'm in a workplace and I'm working long hours, and I start to get really hungry at a certain time in the day. In that case, I might be tempted to go, say, to a vending machine and buy like a candy bar or a bag of pretzels there, and the price on those items is not very good when viewed at, as the unit price. So, if I'm taking care of myself, if I'm making sure I'm eating well, I'm packing enough in my lunch, and maybe I'm having some snacks that I'm storing in my workplace that I can munch on, I can avoid that impulse buy by taking better care of myself. I think the same is true when it comes to mental and emotional health. Uh, that's a little bit of a trickier topic to deal with, so I don't want to go into a lot of depth, but I just think that taking better care of yourself mentally and emotionally can also make you make uh, healthier financial decisions. The last thing I want to talk about is conscious awareness of the way in which retail stores are deliberately engineered to encourage people and facilitate people to make impulse buys. If you go up to the register in a typical retail store, you'll see a whole bunch of small items laid out. They could be like candy, packs of gum, it could be like small accessories. There are a wide range of different types of things you'll find up there. 
and they typically have in common that there are low price tags on the items, and the items are small. And if you look at them, you might think, oh, this doesn't cost very much, I can just get this. But if you start thinking in that more long-term way, you will typically realize that the unit price on those items is not very good. To give you an example, in a supermarket, you can usually find candy bars up at the front, and you can typically find the same candy bars in the back of the store, in bigger packages, for a much lower unit price. So if you really want to eat that type of candy bar, it's a much better financial decision to buy them in the larger pack in the back of the store. So these are just three examples of ways that I think you can develop better financial management skills in the moment when it comes to choosing whether or not you want to make a purchase. I hope that you've gained some insight, and I would love to hear from you if you have any comments, anything to add, uh, please share that. And as always, I really love when people share my videos or subscribe to my channel. Thank you!